major crypto update for the market here make sure you're following me on twitter if you're not following me already but we're going to be talking about bitcoin we're going to be talking about kimball we're going to be talking about Sinkus, solana and a few others out there guys so make sure that if you're not smashing those likes and hitting that subscribe you're at least follow me over here on twitter blockchain b chain crusader but let's get right into it let's jump into the charts let's start off with bitcoin's chart as you can see we had some downward pressure here in the day we've been nothing but chopping sideways between the levels of 43,600 and as low as 43,150 we've been having this kind of uh, downward pressure right here we finally broke out of that trend had a big green candle here in the 15 minute as high as 43,500 and I believe we're just going to keep chopping between here. There's the 2020, uh, there's a 2022 uh, April pivot here. If we don't break above this 43.6, you know, that's just going to be continuously down pressure. And if we lose this 43.150, then we're definitely going to be heading into some lower prices action. But anything that we, meanwhile, we stay above 42.300, right? The 2024 open, Bitcoin is bullish and so will the markets so let's jump right into why is bitcoin being so bullish right why is this happening well right here as you guys can see shout out to hodl 15 capital they're buying up bitcoin in these in these etfs if we zoom on in here in the last couple of days right the 22nd the 23rd all the way up to the 25th we've been negative on total etfs on how much bitcoin has been selling because grayscale has been selling more than what the other etfs have been buying but as of the 26th, we were positive 260, right? And yesterday on the 29th, we were positive 5,920. Grayscale selling has slowed down, which has given a chance for the other ETFs to start accumulating a lot more Bitcoin. So if we jump back over here, you guys can also see the outflows have fallen in the six days in a row with 100 million only yesterday from Grayscale. So they're selling less. Fidelity has picked up 46,238 Bitcoin, right? BlackRock's picked up 52,025 Bitcoin with an average buy of around 370 million of Bitcoin. I've been saying it and I'll say it again. When the grayscale dump ends, Bitcoin's price is going to pump 100%. The selling pressure is going to be gone. So what are we, so for that, Bitcoin's going to be pumping, like I said. Meanwhile, we stay above the, the 2024 open. We are bullish. Let's jump right over into Kimball, right? Shout out to the AVAX community. Shout out to all my Kimball holders out there. Smash those likes. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. You guys know I like to talk about meme coins on this channel here. So Kimball, I've been holding a nice little bag of Kimball, and I continue to believe that maybe, and I do have an interesting uh, tweet about this, about possibly going to 100 million market cap, and we're currently only at 9.1 which is a huge, huge move from here, right? So Kimball's up half a percent today. As you guys can see, we had a lot of downward selling pressure here in the last couple of days, right? And just been kind of slowly going down, but we finally were able to break out of this downward pressure on the 23rd. And since then, we've been slowly climbing back up to the 9 million market. We were sitting around 5 million, give or take, or lower. And then we've slowly been climbing up, which is very bullish for Kimball. But let's jump on over here, right? Uh, this person, GR Ronk on or Gronk.eth on Twitter says, How Kimball will reach a hundred million market cap? So let's shoot right down to Kimball and let's look at this tweet. He says, The most this is the most important. This token is the only other one that fits the requirements for the AVAX culture fund. If you haven't heard about that, I highly recommend you guys look at that. But AVAX themselves has come out saying they want to fund the culture on AVAX and they're going to be doing buybacks. They're going to be buying up actual meme coins. They're going to be investing money into their own ecosystem. So the fact that they are the only one that can qualify for this as AVAX grows, they will see a hundred million plus market cap. On top of that, they are launching NFTs soon called Kimbros NFT. So shout out to them. Um, no affiliation, no sponsorship here, nothing, just something I found on Twitter, something to keep an eye out, just like it says right here. So shout out to that, to my Kimbo community, smash those likes. If you haven't already, I'm super bullish on Kimbo. I'm super excited. I hope Kimbo does hit 100, 100 million because I am going to be holding. So let's jump over to Solana. Solana's trading volume sur um, surges by 39% in the last 24 hours. I'm not even going to be jumping into this article because it's not important why that's happening. What's, hap what's important over here is, right, now there's an analyst coming out saying $115 on the range breakout. Yeah, of course there's going to be a $115 range breakout because if I show you my chart over here, it's real simple. 
we had a lot of downward pressure here. We had a big down downward trend, right? We broke into the December range. We came as low as 83. Well, obviously there's a wick all the way to 79, but we held support here about $84. Since then, we've been nothing but going up and we've broken this market structure of just heading lower and having lower high, lower high, lower high, right? Lower high. And now we have a higher high compared to the previous one. So here are these levels, right? These golden lines are the local levels of resistance that we're going to be facing, which is obviously the first one here is at $105. And we've been fighting this all day. We finally started to come back up over $105. Hopefully we can close above this here. This is on the daily. The next level here will be a weekly, which is exactly at 107. But I'm not too worried about that. The next big local one is 110. If we break above this top here, we're going to be breaking all these lower high, these lower highs and going to be creating going for the new higher high, which is at 121, leaving us the runaway, right? We get about 110. The runway is for 115. These are the levels of resistance. If we see a rejection here, which we possibly can, right? This is a downward trend. We've broken out of it. There's no reason why we can't come back and retest this. Right. We can always retest the breakout before launching all the way to 115. So I don't think just because we're here right now, there's absolutely no way we don't break below 100 bucks. We definitely can. Bitcoin can definitely come back down, break below 43.1 and come back over here to this uh, 2024 open, causing Solana to come back down as well because Solana has been following Bitcoin perfectly. So keep an eye out on these levels. These are the levels to be looking out for before we get to 115 and possibly a lot higher. Now, let's jump on over to Pendo. If you haven't heard about Pendo, it's up 18% following their big Coinbase backed protocol deal. And I've been watching a little bit about Pendo. I've been listening to a few other people talk about it and I've been wondering what it is, right? So here it is. It's a decentralized platform that surges in liquidity crossing over 500 million threshold on the heels of a deal with Ando Finance. Uh, I do. I did buy a little small bag of Ondo Finance. I think I put like 200 bucks in. Been hearing a lot of that, of that crypto. So I did pick up a bag. I have not picked up a bag of Pendo yet, but I am looking to uh, dollar cost average my way into it. Pendo Finance native token Pendo is up 18% following the deal with the Coinbase backed protocol Ondo Finance. Right. I think anything that's backed by Coinbase and that Coinbase is heavily intertwined with, which is obviously Ondo Finance, and now Pendle's getting involved, is going to be very, very successful. The announcement came out yesterday on the 29th. But according to DeFi Llama, their total value locked on Pendle Finance set an all-time high of $538 million as of January 30th, which is today. So that is wild. That's a lot of money very, very fast. The Pendle token has demonstrated a significant participation with its with nearly 60 million in Pendo volume recorded today alone. So look at this volume here. This volume has been skyrocketing. Lots of surges happening on Pendo. Right? With a surge in activity on Pendo, the token soared to 266, surpassing its previous all-time high established since its launch because they launched pretty recently. Um, so therefore, I haven't gotten a bag of Pendo yet because obviously it's in this price discovery mode. I do believe there's going to be a point where there's going to be some type of retracement. There always is. And that's when you hold and wait to buy in at lower levels and not chase, you know, a chase a green candle and, and buy into the hype. I will not be doing that. Pendo's finance approach allows users to tokenize and trade, right? What does this thing do? It, they trade future yields generated by assets across various decentralized protocols this feature enables users to trade these future yields as distinct tokens apparently representing a new way to engage with a speculate and speculate on defi yields so basically you're 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 doing defi and they're they're giving you back an extra token that you can you continue using there's a lot of liquidity involved and it's very actually very good approach to defi and not having things locked up forever so it's something very interesting that i'm keeping my eye on for sure Something else that I'm keeping my eye on is a Ethereum crash to a thousand dollars, according to Benjamin Cowan. Right? Not even gonna dive into this article, but basically what he's talking about here is there's always been these retracements, these twice to these uh, key levels, and in the past it's always done it. Right? So therefore he's playing on the fact that it will once again retrace down 
to that below a thousand dollars or a thousand dollar level for Ethereum. Is it possible? Of course, anything is possible. Does it have to happen? Absolutely not. It does not have to happen. Um, the only way I see Ethereum where we're at from where we're at right now, which is basically 2300 coming down to a thousand bucks, if is Bitcoin has a massive, massive retracement, right? Which I also don't believe is happening because of what's happening with the ETFs, right? I don't see Bitcoin coming down, you know, 30, 40% from where we're at right now because. I know a lot of people are calling for like the mid thirties or whatever, but even if we drop down to 40,000, give or take, it's only 5%. I mean, we would have to drop significantly, significantly from where we're at right now to even, to even have a thousand dollar Ethereum, right? That would be a $34,000 Bitcoin right now would be literally a 20% pullback. Maybe that happens, but I don't see ETH dropping 50%. I don't see Ethereum dropping 50% at all. I don't think this is very likely. I think markets are changing. There's a lot more money being uh, injected into these markets. If it happens, it happens. I'll be there for the position and I'll be there to dollar cost average and buy some more ETH and buy a lot of other altcoins too because if Ethereum is down 50%, the other altcoins are massively bleeding. I just don't see that happening between now and the having and the rest of this year with everything that's happening. 2025 is going to be huge. 2023 has been a huge year over up. Bitcoin's up over a hundred something percent. Ethereum has been performing great as well. I do not foresee this actually happening again, but like I said, anything's possible. If it happens, I will be here for that. Guys, if you're not following me already, follow me, hit that subscribe button right over here on this profile. Greatly help it. If you haven't watched this video right here, right now, watch this video up next. Really help me out. Smash those likes. And until next time, see ya.